Okay, so now we come to the 58s. And this is really pretty straightforward. You can check it in history too. The period covered is 814 to 756. Bad years of Joash, and they were really bad. Through Azariah, aka Uzziah, the guy who ended up getting leprosy. And at the end of that period, um, that's when Isaiah himself is called. And that's according to his own dating. Isaiah used a 42 meter clause in Isaiah 1 1 to let you know that um, he's coming in in the 42nd year. And he stays, nobody knows exactly how long, but sometime during Manasseh's time as king, because Manasseh was king for a very long time, um, Isaiah died or was executed by Manasseh, nobody's really sure. Okay, the focus here is what does the 58 stand for? It's paired. So what Daniel is doing is he's making a very pointed statement that the pivotal period causing the juridical downfall, because remember this is still, we're in the first legal paragraph, which is the indictment. And just before he finishes the indictment, okay, he ends it sort of like climactically with the period of time that culminates in Manasseh's birth. Manasseh's birth. See, Manasseh himself was, until he had a change of heart, which happened to be um, at about his age, 49, okay, which I'll cover in a minute. But the 116 years prior to that. Okay. I think it's 116. I'm really tired now, so some I have to like do silly things like add up numbers I should know already. 116 years prior to Manasseh's birth. See cuz Manasseh was born about 698 BC. Okay. And that and Hezekiah had 15 years um, of life after that. Manasseh, he put on the throne when Manasseh was only 12. Manasseh dies at age 77. He was on the throne for 55 years, you know, nominally speaking, on the throne. So Manasseh ends up being the guy where God says, um, let me see if I can find this. You know, this is where you can find the notes to Daniel 9.13 that talk about Manasseh. And the Bible passages that have to deal with him are all going to be in here. Okay, like in Second Chronicles. Okay. Manasseh's time is a culmination. See, it's not like out of the blue. That's the point. Is that Israel was late to the party. If it's not 56... Um, if it's later than 56, if it's like 57, 58, then that means you missed it. Because see, there's 56 years, 56 days rather, between Passover and Pentecost. So if you missed your appointment, then 58 would mean you missed it. Okay? So they missed, and then Pentecost and Ninth Ab is another 56 days between them. All right, so if you go 58, you missed it. You missed your appointment with God. Israel kept on missing her appointments, you know, with God. So by the time Manasseh is born, even though he was born to a king who changed his mind and did want God, namely Hezekiah, who Isaiah, you know, coached, Manasseh didn't respond. Finally, Manasseh ends up getting taken by the king of Assyria at age 49. And I'm not sure, I want to say he was jailed for seven years. So there's a parallel being drawn with Manasseh personally at his age and the time he was jailed. He ends up having a change of heart. And that was covered actually by um, Isaiah in Isaiah 53.2. Okay. That's when he starts covering um, Manasseh's birth. And 
Daniel is, is paralleling Isaiah and tagging Isaiah for that reason. Syllable 203 in Isaiah is a downfall of the temple in 586, which is supposed to be due to Manasseh. Okay, but how did Manasseh get to be so apostate? Nobody becomes what they are in a vacuum. It's still my, whatever I am, it's still my fault. Okay, but whatever I am is not in a vacuum. I'm in a family, I'm in a society. And what was the character of that society? Okay, the character of the society was always late to the party for 116 years. You know, in other words, like four generations, 120 years, 30 times four, you know, the same idea of the flood. That's what he's tying to there. And this is his clever way of saying late to the party by constructing back to back 58 syllable sections covering Joash starting with his bad years all the way to the birth of Manasseh because the birth of Manasseh was occurring due to Hezekiah okay turning back to God Hezekiah had his bad days too and God said hi get your affairs in order you're gonna die Hezekiah prayed to God and said oh please you know give me more life and God said okay you're gonna get 15 more years and that's when Manasseh was born as a result of that okay so Hezekiah repented Manasseh sort of followed in his dad's footsteps in that Manasseh became really apostate too and then he like his dad had a change of heart and in Manasseh's case he was 49 years old when he did because this is starting with the year of his birth Daniel's tracking it from Manasseh's birth. Okay, Manasseh had a change of heart. He's sitting in Assyria, in the, the king's jail in Assyria. He has a change of heart. He gets restored to power, probably as a puppet king. And he starts being faithful to Israel after that. You can read all about it in Kings. The account is here, and the verses and stuff are all here. But Israel doesn't respond. Why? Because she's still late to the party from 116 years prior. Because see, this is going to be the kings are representing, you know, our characteristic of the society at that time. We all give in to peer pressure. Manasseh ended up going against peer pressure, but the peer pressure remained. Israel remained. Okay, antagonistic. So that's what the 58 is. He's centering on it. See, you got 49 here and 49 here, and it builds up to a head right here with the 258s. And then Manasseh sort of like is the poster boy for the period. God announcing, because of Manasseh, I'm tearing down the temple even if he repents, which of course he does, but Israel doesn't repent. So the temple's still going to go down. This is what God announces his judgment. So Daniel's ticking off the years, and he crafts his paragraphs with the 258s to show you why God says what he says about Manasseh, even though Manasseh repented. Okay? And then, of course, on this time track, he's already folded in Isaiah, and he's tying Isaiah's own ministry to the birth of Manasseh, to Isaiah talking about the temple going down to say hi this is why Isaiah had a ministry to forecast that the temple will go down and then in the next clause of course it's Manasseh again so that in essence these the time tracks the two time tracks the one that's right here and the ones that are right here actually three time tracks they all converge pretty much here here in here okay and then Daniel is in effect by doing it that way he's saying hi this is how come I am praying to you now in 538 BC 70 years later because of all these events that happened see Daniel's doing a timeline when he talks and the text is pretty repetitive because Israel keeps committing the same sins king after king after king. She's good for a little while, then she goes south, then she repents, then she goes south, okay? And he's kick, ticking off the years, 
in order to get to this juridical conclusion, which is, hi, this is where we are, where we are now. This is why I'm praying to you now. This is why the 49 sabbatical years were missed. And that's how he closes out his, you know, with a sort of dramatic high note of the 258s backing Manasseh, who, you know, supported temple prostitutes in the in God's own temple. They were pagan temple prostitutes in God's own, in the actual Jewish temple. And Manasseh let that happen. When he came back, he cleaned them out. But Israel still kept practicing pagan, you know, mostly orgy-based religion in all the so-called high places. See, Manasseh changed his heart at Haha, -ha, age 49. Or he was captured at age 49. And then for the next seven years, he's in jail, kind of like Nebuchadnezzar was crazy for seven years. Manasseh was jailed, I think, for seven years. Then he comes out at age, what is it, 56, ha-ha, comes back to rule and rules until he's 77 years old, same age as David when he dies. Implication being that he was really, he really got his spiritual life together after that. I mean, I don't know that he did, but if he dies at 77, and so did David, that's a kind of nice thing to say. David died at 77. Isaiah made that really clear, dedicating the first 77 syllables of Isaiah 53 to David's life. Because the whole theme of Isaiah is first David, the last David. Okay? So Daniel's paralleling that here. So it's really dramatic, and it's very, what do you want to call it, thought-provoking and meaningful. But if all you do is know the text, and you don't know the meter, you don't know what Daniel's saying. It's just repetitive. We sin, we sin, we sin, we sin, we sin. Like, you know, it's almost obsequious the way he talks. Okay, but he's not being obsequious. He's repeating a history that goes on through all the different kings, and he's using the meter to recount that history. So you see, it makes a huge difference to know the meter. Again, here. So again, that's as much as I can tell you about the 58, but it, you know, you can just go read it. Because this, this part is really pretty clear. It's, it's pretty understandable how he got there. So just click on the notes, like for 912. Here's how you get to the 912. You can read it. Then you can hit your back button on your browser or here. I'm doing it in Word. In order to get that back button, you have to be using an older version of Word. I'm using Word 202 here, but it works the same in Word 203. And then you can look at Daniel. It should work the same way in Adobe with the back button. At least it does in mine. So read it yourself. That part's pretty clear. I have still not answered the 69 any more than I've just told you. And so then the remaining question is, well, what else can I say about this? Because these are the basic bookends. you got the 49 bookend here. We know what that is. That's pretty clear. The 58 bookend makes a whole lot of sense in that context. But the 69 starts here and ends outside the first paragraph, enclosing the growth paragraph of 42. The growth paragraph of 42 is pretty clear. But why is the 69 closing here? And then that makes this sentence stand alone, which gives it more oomph. But why? The answer is, I don't know. Okay, the only thing I can think of to say is that on the second timeline here, you have the transition out of Greece into Rome. And therefore, maybe he wants this sentence to stand on its own because this ends up, on this timeline, it's the rise of Macedon. But on this timeline, it's closing out to the rise of Rome, you know, the feet of clay. Is that why he's doing it? Is that the style? And the answer is I don't know. This is as much as I can tell you right now. Signing off.